Good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started on this lovely, beautiful afternoon outside. It's finally nice, right? Summer seems like it's ending, but it's really just beginning, isn't it? <laughs> so what a great night. Um, we want to thank you all so much for coming to spend some time with us tonight. My name is Emily Martinez, and I'm Stark DD's new SSA and Investigative Services Director. And Diana Lashley is here, Manager of Health and Therapy Services. We want to welcome you to our first family information series. We're really excited to start this off. We're so appreciative that you came out to spend time with us tonight. We really want your feedback on today's presentation and some ideas you might have for future presentations. This is something that we really want to continue so that as things change, as things go on with the DD system, we want to be able to have family information series where families can come in, providers can come in, and spend time with us, and we can all learn about what's going on together. So today, we're actually gonna talk about bed bugs. Diana's gonna do that. <laughs> She's gonna do the best part. And I am actually gonna take up the second part of the um, discussion and talk about the individual service plan and the new person-centered approach that we're required to take by the new Service and Support Administration rule. So I'm going to turn it over to Diana to entertain us about bud bugs, and I'll be talking with you all later. Hello, everybody. I always get the best topics since I'm in the nursing field, so um, with that, we're going to move forward and see what we can learn about bed bugs tonight. We've all heard the old adage, don't let the bed bugs bite. Um, we're going to learn a little bit about where that came from. Um, over the past five years, there's been a really a resurgence of bed bugs, not only in the United States, but in Ohio itself and in our Canton area. Stark DD has been working in collaboration with all the local health departments in order to take a proactive approach to that. How are we going to manage this? What can we do in prevention? And how can we help those that have the situation occur? Um, we have determined that educating the public and our agencies is the best, best events that we have right now at this time. The Stark County um, has a bed bug task force, of which I'm a member of, and we meet quarterly. We look at what the statistics are in, in Stark County, what situations are occurring. We look at new management of uh, bed bugs. Uh, new products, things that we can recommend, interventions to the community. In addition to that, our own agency, Start DD, also has a bed bug task force, and that task force meets quarterly. We look at how we're doing as an agency, if we've had any incidences, how our management was, we review our policies and procedures and make changes where necessary. Okay, so let's look at the history of bed bugs. Um, historically, literature will refer to them as the red coat bugs, and the reason being is that they came over with our European ancestors in the early 1700s, and a lot of it's associated with the, the British troops, the red coats, and their close housing quarters. It was a problem for them then, um, and that's actually where we got the term of spring cleaning because our ancestors would take out the mattresses every spring and they would beat them, they would clean their frames, they would use arsenic, they would use sulfur, hot boiling water to try to kill the bed bugs. Um, so they've been a problem all along. In 1942, um, we had the use of the development of DDT and they discovered that after using that, that was really a great treatment. They pretty much eradicated the bed bugs. And they discovered that also once treated, that treatment seemed to last approximately one year. But in 1972, they out or discontinued the use of the DDT because they felt the pesticides was were damaging to the environment, especially our bird population and the wildlife. And not only that, it was a possibility of causing some cancer and other disease processes. So consequently, once they stopped the use of the DDT, we have experienced a resurgence of the bed bugs. This is the current listing of the worst cities in the United States as of 2014. And to make it a little easier to see, I highlighted those cities which are in Ohio. We 
have four cities in the top ten cities with bed bugs. Now, the good news about this list is three of the four have decreased their, their rating on their ranking on this list. They've moved downward, but Columbus has held steady. But if we really look at those cities in Ohio, those cities are higher populations. They have international travel hubs. They all have huge universities. We've got international students. We've got students, our students going and going abroad and coming back. Close housing with the apartments and all the dormitory living. And that all kind of um, plays into this, this uh, population and this problem. The biggest concern that the Orkin Company has identified, which is pretty firm of Orkin, they're the big pesticide company, they feel that the biggest problem is that they are called hitchhikers. And we'll talk a little more about that here as we go. So what really are bed bugs? Bed bugs are nocturnal parasites. So what does that mean? Bed bugs are parasites, and that means that they live off of another. They're they uh, prefer to feed on humans, but they will feed on other mammals and pets, such as dogs or cats. They are nocturnal, meaning that they feed at night. But there's a catch to this. If you happen to be an into someone who has works on shift work shifts and you work the night shift and you're sleeping during the day, what do you do to your environment? You close the blinds, you make it as dark as possible, and you make it a false night. So those bed bugs are smart enough to figure that out because you're laying still, it's dark, and they're not killed, they're going to come out and they will feed during the day while you're sleeping. Um, one thing about them is they're very small. They're about the size of an apple seed. So if you can imagine that, that's their size. They don't attach to you, to a human being. They don't attach to anything um, live. Not like a, unlike a tick or a lice, they will attach. But they do like to hitchhike. And so you will find them in your, in your purses if we put them on our floor. One thing that you can do is don't put your purses on the floor. Keep them up on the table or elevated off the ground. You see, we now have these purse hangers. Use them, use them. It's good. Um, they'll come in on shoes, book bags, anything. Um, the one thing that's really unique about the bed bug is that it does not transmit disease, unlike a lot of other creatures we have in our, our society. They do not cause disease. Um, they can be found anywhere. It's not because you have a messy house or you have not the best hygiene in the world as far as keeping your environment clean. That's not it. But they do like clutter. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you go, well, thinking that as you're traveling, I'm just going to go to the five-star hotels, well, guess what? They have them, too. We've heard that in the news with New York City, some of their best, the largest hotels, anywhere you're at. Just because it's a five-star doesn't mean it's bed bug free. So where can we find the bed bugs? We can find them in apartments, in our homes, in shelters, hotels, motels the dormitories, the apartment livings, even at laundromats. They live in the cracks and crevices of anything, um, where, especially where you sit or sleep. So, you know, sometimes people really love these lounge chairs. That's great, but that if you're in that chair a long time, I said, that's a place where something could grow, um, could be found. One, a couple areas that we really don't think about very often, but we go to quite often, are the department stores. How many of you have ever gone to the department store and used their fitting rooms to try on clothing? I think probably everybody. And you probably have a friend or two that um, sometimes takes something home and then decides later that they really don't want that, so they return it to the department store. That's fine, but we don't know where that piece of clothing has been placed while they were home. The department store is not going to launder that or dry clean that before they put that back on the rack. So rule of thumb for you is to inspect what you're going to try on before you try it on. And if you take it home, wash it, launder it, or dry clean it, whatever the tag says, prior to wearing that or putting it in your closet or in your drawer. Another place that we need to be conscious of is movie theaters. It's another false evening. You 
know, it's dark in there. You're in there for an hour and a half to two hours. It's, it's just the right environment for them. So again, keep your personal belongings on your lap. Don't put them on the floor. Where are their hideouts? Where do they hide? This slide really can show you um, quite a few places. Uh, they hide behind artwork and mirrors. They'll hide behind any of your light fixtures, behind headboards, the headboards that are attached to the walls. They will hide around and behind outlets. Also inside and under your, the casing of your, your bed, your bed frames. So you need to be looking at everything. They'll be along the baseboards. They can even be in the draperies. Um, rule of thumb is when you go to a hotel, please take the time before you get settled in to take a look at some things. And you'll see some examples of what you need to look for as we go through this. Um, OK. So how does a bed bug travel? One of our major concerns is housing and apartment living. If you happen to live in an apartment complex or you own an apartment complex, this is very important for you to understand. Um, bed bugs do not fly, but they will move very rapidly across the floor, over the walls. They'll follow the, the um, electrical lines from one location to another. So if you're living in a complex, it only takes one, and it will travel from one apartment to the other. So if bed bugs are discovered, it's not just the apartment that bed bugs were identified in that needs treated, but those surrounding that apartment need it also because they're, they will travel. One thing that will help you if you're out traveling and on vacation and you find that you feel that you have bed bugs or in your room, and you must be wise and go down and report that to the manager have them move you, don't have them move you next door, don't have them move you in the same wing of that hotel, move them to another wing, because it would be the same situation as in the apartment living, okay? Who gets bite bugs? Anyone. Do we want them? No. Is it a sign of uncleanliness? No. Is it a sign of poor hygiene? No. Remember, they're hitchhikers. They come from anywhere. It's very hard to identify where they come from. We can't. How do we get bed bugs? As I've said several times, they're hitchhikers. They love inanimate objects. They love to hitch a ride and go anywhere. They're the best sightseers we've got. So when you're traveling, or for in your day-to-day -day travels, be conscious of where you're putting your items. You know, keep them up if you can. As you travel, then they're going to go with objects of clothing, in your luggage, book bags, used furniture and bedding. And I want to say, if you are one who loves to like garage sales shop or go to the Goodwill, you can find a lot of great bargains there. But make sure you're inspecting that item really closely first. If you see any signs, any dark spots or any signs, you don't really want to take that item home without knowing that. And then if you take it home, put it someplace where you can treat it before you use it and bring it into your home. Okay. One thing I would recommend with traveling and your luggage, a lot of the luggage anymore um, has been for a few years the cloth-sided luggage. And even any of it doesn't really matter. but when you come home, if you, the very way you should do is take that luggage and put it in a clear plastic bag and let it sit in your garage away from your house for, for a little, about a week to two weeks. And then, take, make, then you can look at it. If there's anything there, you will see them in the plastic bag. And you will know that there have been red bugs. You can, know, you can decide at that point whether you want to get rid of that or if you want to treat it or what you want to do. But that will keep them from entering your home and causing you a great problem at that point. So how are bed bugs detected? This is kind of a gross little picture, but it's actually the beds, the seam on your on a mattress. And there are several things here that you, you want to um, 
that you want to take a look at. And I'm going to point that out to you here because I can't get them to. But as you see here, you'll see that you may actually see some bed bugs, but you'll actually see something that looks like a shell. They do shed their outer skin just like a snake does. That exoshell is not anything to worry about. But the live bed bug is. You'll also see these dark little spots. Those are the things that you want to look for when you when you go into a room. You want to look look, look along the lines of your mattress, look around the bed frames, and look around the wall, the pictures that are hanging on the walls for any signs of those, because they will hide in those places, and that's what you'll see. And the, the red the dots can be like either reddish or brown to black, those little the little specks like. So do bed bugs bite? Yes, they do. This is a picture of an individual who has had some bed bugs bites, but if you look at them, how different do they look from a mosquito bite? Someone who has a real big reaction to mosquito bites, a bee sting, anything. They look so much like other skin diseases or skin rashes that it, you cannot determine bed bugs by a bite. Okay. In fact, there are people that will, they may, there may be bed bugs in their environment, they are not going to react to them whatsoever, they won't have a single mark on them. So. But should you have the situation, um, you want them to treat it just like any other bite. You want to wash it well with soap and water, and a good soap to use is any of the antibacterials. Dial soap is a good bar soap to use. Um, you can apply any antiseptic cream that you have there. Um, and, you, and if it's really bad, you may want to make a contact to the doctor and get an antihistamine that will help with that itching and the swelling there. They really aren't painful. It's just a lot of this, you know, it's just a nuisance. And that itching, just like a mosquito bite, you know, if you touch it and it starts to itch, yeah, it's annoying. Are bed bugs really a health concern? They're not known to spread any disease. They are not really um, disease causing, but what they are, they're a nuisance to us. They're very annoying. No one wants this to happen. Um, the only thing that we would caution about is, is the itching part. If somebody would, would continue to scratch at that, it's just like anything else you can set yourself up to a secondary infection in that local area. And usually the rash is caused by the allergic reaction. And what actually happens when a bed bug bites? The bed bug has two little tubules. And they're little tubes that come down to the skin. One of them, the bed bug actually injects into your system an anticoagulant like you would like heparin, somebody uses when they need to have their blood thin. And this actually thins the blood. That allows them to feed easier. And I know that's disgusting and gross, but that's what happens. The other tubule, what they're doing is injecting an, an anesthetic to you. So you don't even feel them. It numbs that area as they're feeding, and you don't even feel that. So that's kind of an interesting thing. It's not just a quick bite and off they go like the mosquito. Okay, so what types of treatment do we have available to us for bed bugs? <clears throat> there are several. The most effective one is a heat treatment. That one it needs to be done by a pesticide company. There's two options with the heat um, treatment. You can have what they call a trailer heat where they take all your articles of, and items and put them in a, treat, a trailer that they heat up to 140 degrees and that will kill the bed bugs. The other one is the whole home or entire house treatment where they will seal everything off and bring the temperature up in your home to 140 degrees for the, the uh, correct period of time and that will kill them. That's very expensive so hopefully you never have to go that route. Another type of treatment is chemical treatment. Chemical treatment is best left to the pesticide company as well because it needs a repeated treatment. It's not just a one-time deal. And they understand and know how to manage those chemicals because the chemical has to reach the area in which the bed bug is in and it has to be able to penetrate 
the surfaces and has to be able to come in contact with that bed bug. So it's best to let them do that. We also have something called diatomaceous earth, and that's a mouthful. But what that is, is um, actually a powder that gets into the lungs of the bed bug and it will suffocate the bed bug. It's probably the best type of treatment if you can do that, but if you have little children around or anybody that um, cats and dogs or pets, you don't want that left around. Um, but it is very effective if you can clear the home of that and use that and then vacuum it up, it works. We also have fumigants and foggers. There is a difference between those two. The fumigant will be a pest control. It does penetrate surfaces so that it gets into where the bed bugs are. A fogger does absolutely nothing for a bed bug. If you're buying a fogger for a bed bug, you're wasting your money. All it does is fog up the room. It doesn't penetrate any of the surfaces that it would need to, so it's not effective. And then there's a new type of treatment on, on board now, and that's bed bug sniffing dogs. We've seen dogs be able to do things for a, a lot of people. A lot of our folks with, some folks with seizures have the dogs that work with them. Um, our C9 dogs also. Bed bugs can be sniffed out by the dogs. And we've actually seen tr um, examples of this and demonstrations of this, and it was amazing. Um, we, with the health department, we hid some in a, in a room that the dog had never been in before and the dog was brought in after all that was done and went right, went around and went right to that area and located it. So this is a method that a lot of like the hotels and the bigger agencies and the companies are using because then they can determine whether they need treatment or whether there is a problem. So it's kind of interesting. So bed bug prevention. Again, I've already mentioned this, but again, I'll say it. If you're purchasing secondhand items, make sure you're washing them, examining them before you put them in your closets or your drawers and you wear them. Inspect them carefully. Inspect your mattresses and hotel rooms, also the surrounding things on the walls. Make sure you're using the luggage rack. If there's not a luggage rack, the second best place to put the, your luggage when you're not using it is in the bathtub. Bed bugs have a hard time coming up that slick surface. So that's a good place to put them. Okay, and bed bug prevention. The best method is when you return from the trip, unload those suitcases, put the stuff right into the washer, wash them, dry them, and put them in your, your closet or your drawers. Clean your luggage, you can use a firm bristle brush to brush it and then vacuum it. You wanna reduce the clutter in your home or any areas that you're, you're in. And um, you want to be proactive and treat that bed bug infestation as quickly as possible because it's not going to go away if you ignore it. It'll just get worse. And one thing I wanted to tell you about if you're vacuuming up something, a neat little trick that we've learned is that everybody knows what a knee-high hose stocking is, okay? You know how you have your, uh, your sweeper hose and then you put your attachment on? If you take one of those knee-highs and stick it down in that hose and bring the, the banding out over it and then put your attachment on. You can sweep that, sweep up any residue. It'll collect in that nylon stocking. Well, before you open that attachment or remove the stocking, if you put a little bit of talcum powder or baby powder on the surface, sweep that up, it'll get into that bed bug's lungs and it will um, suffocate them. When you open that up, take your attachment. You can always wash your attachment, but then you can just knot that nylon stocking and throw it in the trash. So that helps to save you um, getting a problem within your sweeper as well. Okay, a few more important tips. School starting back, everybody's getting new bed, uh, backpacks and that, and lunch boxes. I would recommend that you get those items that are washable and have a regular cycle of washing them and inspecting them. Get set up a new routine, take a look at everything when they come home every day, and be sure that you're, you're watching and, and just vigilant. Um, coats and other items, anything that travel back and forth with our students and with our individuals, please do that. Um, even yourself, if you're, if you're one that loves to carry a backpack someplace, you know, the same thing goes. And I know that one thing that is helpful um, is if you're able to, 
use a clear plastic storage bin for each person. And they can drop their things in them when they come home. They can put the lid on them. They're sealed. If there's any problem, you'll see it in the morning because they will be out in the, in the container. And you know right then that you've, you've at least prevented it from going any further than that container. You can take care of it. Okay. Um, any clothes or coats or anything that you suspect has been come into contact with bed bugs, one thing that you can do is just put them immediately in the dryer and run them for 30 minutes on the highest cycle for that fabric. Okay. And that will kill the bed bugs. So just so you know that. So those are a few things that you can take as preventative steps. And then here's some resources that you can use. Um, you can certainly contact any of the local health departments and work with them if you have a question. Uh, there's really good literature on with the Central Ohio Bed Bug Task Force. Ohio State University Extension Office has put out some good you know, information. And then there's others here that we can that I've used to provide the information to you. So any questions? Okay, thank you.